Hey guys, it's Robway here and today we are doing another tutorial and this one is relating to uh, photo manipulation and also how we can combine photos together in a way where it's going to look natural, it's going to look good and uh, you know we can create, in this case we're going to create a really kind of interesting advertisement um, that uh, you know through the use of combining different photos. So let's get started. Uh, in the tutorial folder, we got a few different pictures. We got this dancer, we got the road, we got a stormy sky, we got a title. Those are what we're going to put together. Now, just a quick note that these images are not my own, and the tutorial itself is based off of another one that I found online, which uh, again is really, really excellent. I'll put the link in my description. Uh, I'm going to open up dance.tiff with Photoshop. And here's our first image. This is the guy we want to start with. And I'm going to also open up road.jpg with Photoshop. And that's actually where we're going to start. So we want to have the dancer open, we want to have the road open as well. We're going to start by using the crop tool, which is fifth tool down, and click that. We want to make sure over here that it's set to unconstrained. So that's from the pull down here, unconstrained. And what we want to do is we want to just crop the center sort of portion of the picture. All right, we're taking off the edges here. We're going to end up with that where the road's kind of in the middle. And that looks good to me. We're going to hit enter and we're going to get rid of the sides there. We're going to zoom in a bit here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the magic wand tool and I'm going to make sure that add to selection is on up here, second icon over, and our tolerance is going to be set to 32. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the blue of the sky and you can see how that's working. I'm clicking and because I got add to selection on, I can keep adding to it. And you'll notice that that cuts off nicely at the top of the mountains. And I'm just going to unlock my background and hit OK. And I'm going to delete that blue sky. Now we got the checkerboard happening so we know that it is gone and we've got a clear background. I'm going to press Command D to deselect. And now we're going to open another image. We're going to open up Storm Sky. And that will open up nicely with Photoshop as well. There we go. I'm going to click the move tool. We're going to drag the stormy sky over to the road and drop it over here. And we're going to actually move that layer below by clicking and dragging. And we're going to just go to the move tool and press command T to transform. And we're just going to fit that sky in here so that it looks like it kind of belongs. Now, for those of you who are, um, you know, perfectionists, which you should be, um, you'll notice that the sky, the horizon and the sky, it wouldn't look like that. Especially if you have these dark storm clouds and this would be shrouded in more of a dark sort of silhouetted against that sky. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back up to that top layer where that uh, road is on and we're going to click the burn tool which is right under the dodge tool and we're going to make sure our brush is set super soft I got it at zero here mid tones and an exposure of 50 percent and we're just going to increase our brush and we're just going to paint the tops of these mountains a few times to get them nice and dark and silhouetted against that background all right, so you can see what I'm doing here. I am painting them enough so that they become silhouetted against the sky. All right, maybe one more time. Uh, one thing with the burn tools that you are going to have to go over it a few times. Now, again, shadows would cast, uh, you know, or sorry, the clouds would cast dark shadows on that area. You can see that that looks much more realistic than that. All right, it adds a more ominous sort of a look to the picture. All right, so that's good. Um, 
Now what we're going to do is we want to make the pictures look like they belong together a little bit more. So we're going to hold shift, oh, sorry, not shift, not yet. We're going to add an adjustment layer and we're going to add a photo filter to the overall scene. And I'm going to go with the warming filter and I'm just going to bring up the density so that that scene becomes very yellowy looking. All right, cool. Photo filter is really useful because what it does is it brings the two pictures together. It makes them look like they were taken um, at the same time because it adds a, kind of an overall uh, tone to both images, which again, ties them together nicely. All right, so we've got a pretty believable background now with the sky. Um, I do want to bring out some of the details here. So I'm going to make an, another adjustment layer. I'm going to go brightness and contrast. And I'm going to bring up that brightness a little bit. I'm going to pull up the contrast so the details really pop in those uh, in the, the grass. All right. So every time you add an adjustment layer, what's happening is it gets added over top of whatever you're working on and it affects everything below it. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our dancer. And don't ask why, because I don't know. Um, we have a dancer, or a break dancer in this case, who's dancing in the desert. Um, doesn't have to make sense. We're going to go here, and we are going to click this image. And in here, I've already got this set up nicely, where I've got a layer where he's cut out. And on the bottom layer, I've got the original picture. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to need both. So we're going to hold shift. We're going to click both layers. So both layers are highlighted. Then we're going to use the move tool and we are going to move both layers over to the road file. All right. And if you look at your layers, they are both there now. And we want to move these below those adjustment layers because we want the color of this picture to match that as well. Now he's way too small for the road, so we're going to press Command T. You notice that I still have those selected, so I'm going to enlarge both of them at the same time. And for those of you who have really keen, uh, keen eyes, you'll notice that the shadows that are being cast on the road are going the opposite direction from the shadows that are being cast on him. So we want to flip them around. So again, with those selected, we're going to go to edit. We're going to go transform and we're going to go flip horizontal. And now our break dancer guy has the shadows going the right way. We want to enlarge him using command T big enough so that the shadows go off the edge of the page. Otherwise it's going to look weird after you'll see why. So I like that. I think that looks good there. Now, obviously it looks horrible with the background. And um, if I was to just hide the layer with the background off, it's going to look super fake. He's going to look like he was just pasted there, um, which 90% of the photo uh, creations, Photoshop creations out there look like because people forget to bring the shadow across. So what we want to do is we want to actually hide this top layer where he's alone and show the bottom layer. And we're going to isolate the shadows so that they become, um, we get them on their own. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to select this layer. We're going to go image adjustments, desaturate. We're going to take all the color out of this lower layer. Okay. So now the lower layer has no color. Um, it's getting that tinted color from these two um, adjustment layers. We're not worried about that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go image adjustments and we're going to invert the colors. So he becomes some kind of a zombie looking dancer. This is so that we can see the shadow areas better. Next, we're going to go to image adjustments levels. And we are going to tweak our levels so that the shadows become the most dominant um, thing that's left. Okay. Um, obviously we're still going to get some highlights on him. Not a big deal, but we want those shadows to really be the only thing left. All the background is gone. Just the shadows. So we're going to hit okay. 
All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna invert our image again. We're gonna go image adjustments, invert. And he becomes a super high key version of his former self. We're gonna change that layer to multiply. And now we end up with this sort of transparent version of our dancer. Now what we can do is turn on our layer above and now we got these beautiful natural looking shadows which came from the original picture and makes him look like he's really there. You can see that the shadows match, that's very important. You'll notice that we got a couple of little fragments, little pieces left, so we're gonna take the eraser tool and we're just gonna get rid of those. All right, any little fragment we have left without cutting out the shadows, we're gonna just get rid of. All right, so there's just a couple pieces there, nothing major. All right, now we got our dancer and we got the shadow looking like they belong together very nicely. Now what we're going for here is a high contrast sort of a look. Um, some people call it a grungy, harsh edge look. Um, I've heard all sorts of different terms used for it. We're gonna start by going onto our layer three and we are going to make a duplicate of it. So duplicate that layer, hit okay. We're gonna to go to filter, other, we're gonna to go to high pass and we're going to add a high pass filter at about just a small amount, somewhere around, oh, I got it about 8.9, we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna change that layer to, uh, we could try multiply, that's not very good. Overlay, let's see what overlay looks like. Yeah, overlay's good. That's gonna make a little bit more of a harsher light. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add a new layer right here in between the um, high pass that we just added and the original picture of the guy on the layer by himself. We're gonna to go to edit, we're gonna fill, and we're going to fill it with 50% gray and we're gonna hit okay. All right, and on this layer, this is where we are going to do our dodging and burning. And dodging and burning is what gives you that really contrasty, harsh lighting that um, is pretty popular these days. So with this layer, we're gonna set it to overlay and you're not gonna see any difference, that's good. We're gonna zoom in on our subject and we're gonna grab the um, dodge tool to start. Make sure you're set to mid-tones and 50% exposure. And what we're gonna do, and you have to be a little bit creative here, is we're going to paint over the highlights of our subject. Okay, so we're gonna just paint over those highlights Anywhere where the light is really hitting harsh on him, we're gonna just accent those areas by painting over them. All right, so anywhere that light is bright, even the tip of his shoe here. All right, and just go a little bit at a time. And trust me, you won't see a huge difference as you're working on it, but you will at the end. All right, make sure you get a little bit on his pants because obviously his pants are getting some light here too. And that back shoe is getting some light there. All right, so that's the highlights portion of that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to the shadows portion. So we're gonna actually switch to the burn tool. What I wanna do is I wanna reduce my exposure down to about 20% mid-tones as well. And now we're gonna paint over the dark areas. And what this will do is really darken up those areas. And what this is doing is creating more contrast between the dark areas and the light areas, which is gonna give more impact and more of a harsh effect on our subject than before. All right, so the darkest areas we're painting over now and you don't want to go crazy with the burn tool because then you'll start losing some detail. We want to have the detail still visible. We don't want our blacks too black. All right, 
So I did that pretty quick and uh, just to show you what that layer looks like on its own, that's it right there. Uh, it's mainly just the highlights and the shadows painted over. So you start with a 50% gray, which means it's not going to affect anything and you lighten and darken accordingly. And I'll just show you what it looks like with and without it. You can see that it gives a much more rougher, harsher edge. We could have, I could have went with a harder brush, but uh, for the sake of the tutorial, that's okay. All right, so now all of our elements are kind of coming together nicely here. We've got the sky and the dancer and the road. Everything looks like it belongs together. The shadow looks really, uh, really uh, good in this case. We're now gonna add another adjustment layer. And this time we are going to add a, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought. We're gonna add a color balance slider. And in this case, we are just going to make a more dramatic look to our image. We're gonna adjust that a little bit to make it look more dramatic. And again, we can tweak it however we want. All right, we're gonna add another adjustment layer. We're gonna add a, a hue and saturation this time. We're gonna pull our saturation down a bit so it becomes more muted. All right, you can lighten it up a little bit too. All right, now the nice thing about these um, adjustment layers is we can go back and tweak it. So like we have a brightness and contrast, we can double click that and I can go and change that now if I want, if I'm finding that you know, it's not enough now. If I want more contrast or whatever, I can change that. Okay, so you can see that we're ending up with a really cool looking effect here. And um, by combining those multiple pictures, they, they look like they belong together. Now, we're gonna add some text. Now, this could be anything. It could be a brand, it could be whatever. In this case, I just typed the word break. We're gonna open that with Photoshop. It's called Title. There it is. And I'm gonna drag that, and you can see that I've got an effects fill uh, layer on there. It's called uh, Drop Shadow. Uh, I'm gonna drag that to that file. And just drop it in there. Now, it looks really weird. It looks pasted on top, which is not what I was going for. So we're going to drag that layer down to the second last layer, it's going to go under the mountains but above the sky. And now you see that you get this nice effect where it looks like the word is actually behind the mountains. And you know, you got the drop shadow that's on there as well. Uh, it makes a really nice, modern, uh, interesting sort of an effect to the uh, poster, if this would be a poster or whatever and you end up with kind of a neat effect. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Again, we used a couple of new things there. We used uh, adjustment layers. We did high pass and we were adjusting our blending modes, dodging and burning, which like I said, or I uh, should have mentioned anyways, is an art in itself. Um, if you practice with dodging and burning, you'll get really good. You get all sorts of neat effects that way. Uh, also, the addition of our dramatic sky and our burning on the mountains, this all kind of makes the picture tie in nicely together. Save your work. I'm going to go save as to my desktop. I'm going to call it break. Save. And if you got that far, excellent. Hopefully you use some of these techniques in your own work. Uh, especially if you're combining photos together, you're making an advertisement for somebody and you gotta create a really dynamic sort of a look, these techniques uh, should prove to be useful. Anyways, till next time, take care.